First, I want to talk to you about what the government has done to strengthen our healthcare system. The government and the island's 13 GP practices have been talking about how to work together to tackle the coronavirus pandemic. And I can announce today that from next week, more than 100 GPs in Jersey are to be employed directly by the Health and Community Services Department for the first time ever. And this is a landmark agreement for our island. Our shared priority is to save lives. So we've come together to ensure that islanders can have access to health professionals as quickly as possible at a time when health resources are needed most. Starting today, and initially for the next four months, all GPs will be directly employed by the health department, and it will provide more resilience for the hospital to care for seriously ill patients. This agreement gives health and community services more capacity and more flexibility to adapt to the changing needs and puts Jersey's healthcare system in a stronger position to tackle COVID-19. It is a significant step forward in ensuring that we have a resilient health service which is prepared and able to save lives. The second update is on the support that the government is providing for islanders in partnership with community, charitable and voluntary groups. We set up a government community task force to coordinate the voluntary and community sector and parish response to coronavirus to identify, predict and meet the needs of islanders and especially vulnerable islanders as they develop. It is led by Deputy Judy Martin with Deputy Karen Labby, Conatab Simon Crowcroft of St Helia and a further representative from the Comité de Conatabs. So last Monday we launched our volunteer gateway at www.volunteer.je and it offers advice for people looking to volunteer and to the voluntary and community sector. But you may also just contact your parish hall. At their request, we are also developing a toolkit for parishes on how best to organise and offer support. Additionally, the government has agreed that the housing gateway will manage the, the need to rehouse homeless people in hotels, and yesterday we secured emergency powers to prevent evictions. Yesterday, we also launched a Connect Me form on gov.je to enable islanders to let the government know what support they need. Customer and local services are supporting this, as well as taking referrals from the helpline. We are working as well with the new Children and Families Hub to make sure that information channels are clear and that all activity is appropriately safeguarded. And we've worked with the Salvation Army to set up a central food bank and have established a charitably funded agreement with Waitrose to guarantee supplies to it. And we've identified the key areas of support for islanders. These are and include access to food and hot food for those who need it, getting and distributing groceries to people who are self-isolating, housing, access to medicines and medical supplies, home care, including practicalities like laundry, care for adults, children and family services, and mental health and well-being. So all of this is where we are targeting our efforts and we will announce further details over the next few days. I want to thank all of those, from community and voluntary organisations, parishes, donors and volunteers, for coming together in this collective effort to support vulnerable islanders. And we can be proud that the community spirit is shining through in these challenging times. My final update today is what we are doing to protect and support islanders' livelihoods. The government knows that many islanders are generally worried and fear for their jobs and their incomes, and local businesses are anxious about how they will survive the pandemic. Now, we've already announced a number of measures designed to help islanders to put food on the table and businesses to reduce costs. So on the 12th of March, we announced an immediate deferral of all GST payments and social security contributions from employers and employees due to the government over the next six months. Now, we estimate that this will provide around £80 million of support directly to Jersey businesses and the local economy. We also agreed to consider rent deferrals or renegotiations on a case-by-case -case basis where the government or a government-owned company 
is a landlord to a local business. Last week, we announced a £50 million loan guarantee scheme to support business, which will be administered through Jersey Business and will be ready for launch on or around next Monday. We also announced a Jersey Recovery Fund, also worth around £50 million, and that's to support larger businesses which are delivering a wider public good or supporting an essential strategic purpose. And we also announced a payroll co-funding scheme which will initially provide a government wage subsidy of around £200 a week for six weeks for businesses and the self-employed who are severely impacted by coronavirus with the first payment due at the beginning of April. And in response to our ongoing discussions with business representatives, we've also agreed to bring forward a further package of support, which we will be announcing over the next 48 hours. To help islanders with their bills, we've worked with utility companies to give customers flexibility in their payment terms, including payment deferrals. To help people at work, the island's telecom providers have boosted their data capability at no extra cost. And as, all, as I have also already mentioned, to help islanders in rent difficulties, we've secured emergency powers to prevent evictions. The government is also, larger spend, is also the largest spender in the local economy and an important customer for local businesses, and this will continue to be the case. So we will be a prompt payer of invoices to local business. We will prioritise buying local and procuring local. We want to encourage early conversations between banks and their customers and hope to see practical solutions offered, including enhanced overdrafts and loan availability and capital repayment holidays. And we are putting support measures and extra money in place to advise and support businesses to implement their business continuity plans. And the Coronavirus Business Liaison Group will continue to meet regularly to understand the ongoing impact on business and ensure that appropriate government support is available. As I've said, we are refreshing and refining the package of support over the next 48 hours. But we have to be clear that we have a finite amount of money in our strategic reserve and we've already committed £400 million of that in financial support for our island. So we will not make snap judgments now that will leave our economy in a worse state in the future. And we must not leave ourselves without the resources we will need to support the economic recovery when we come through this current situation. But I can assure you that we are very focused on protecting both lives and livelihoods. We are facing an unprecedented situation. And like all governments around the world, we are working harder and faster than ever to understand the situation from a health, social and economic perspective and to put the right measures in place based, as always, on expert advice. So today I've updated you, Islanders, on a number of announcements and I will continue to advise Islanders as soon as we have any new information. Our priority is to save as many lives as possible. And thank you for listening.